Welcome to 2x4 Hardcore, Episode 2, A Temple and an Expansion. Hey guys, so, uh, last week I wasn't really that clear on what this series is about. Um, I know it was only six minutes long, and so pretty much I'm gonna be making reviews and going in depth on the, uh, different hardcore games on the iPhone. And each week, we're going to have probably 30-minute episodes. And for the first few weeks, we're going to have two episodes. Also, we're going to have different segments of the episodes. Uh, Pretty much, the first few episodes are going to be only one or two games that we talk about. And then after that, we're going to have different segments in each episode where we talk about certain games. So, um, today, we're going to be talking about the uh, Order and Chaos update, and also Infinity Blade 2. And next week, we're going to be talking more about Aerostar's Temple, Infinity Blade 2, and probably Modern Combat 3. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about Dead Space and Minecraft and others in the future. And hopefully we can get some of you guys to request games to talk about. We're going to start with the Aerostar's Temple. It's pretty good so far. Uh, I've run it like five times in the past few days. There's a new logo, and instead of an elf, there's an orc. And it's pretty detailed, but I think a lot of people like the elf better. I was kind of hoping for an undead logo myself. So pretty much what it is, is another exploration dungeon. So you have to walk through the whole thing and all the mobs and bosses are already there. Game Off said it takes about 40 minutes, and that's true using the traditional way, which is where you take every single mob and you have to kill all the bosses, and then when everything's gone, I guess that counts as a run. So probably that's what Game Off was thinking when they said it was 40 minutes. But there's actually different methods to do it. The most popular method that I've run a lot is where um, your whole team basically skips most of the mobs. And you basically just do the first few mobs and then the next four bosses and then you pull the last boss without doing all the other mobs. Uh, so at the beginning, you have the mage go in, and usually mages are able to clear all the mobs by themselves without having a monk. The mage goes in, and he gathers up all the mobs, and he basically uses fire barrage, and you probably have to have potions, because you run out of mana pretty quickly. And you basically just kill those first few mobs before the um, the kind of instance thing with the four bosses. And you just have to clear a path so that the whole team can walk through. You don't have to kill every single mob there, but you have to kill most of them so that there's a path that you can get to the first few bosses. And then basically you have the warrior, the, the ranger, and the monk go in. And they all walk on that set, set path that the mage made. When you get to the first four bosses, uh, you pretty much have the tank pull the um, the ranger and the warrior boss. Because there's actually four bosses, it's all four classes. And you have, the ro- you have the warrior basically kite those two guys, while the mage and the ranger work on the monk and the mage boss. So the monk has to follow the warrior while he's kiting. And he has to basically heal him while he's killing the bosses. And he basically just has to... The warrior just has to run with those two bosses until the mage and the ranger bosses are down. And then you have the four of you meet up and you kill the archer. And then you all have to kill the warrior. And he's the hardest because he does AoE spells and he targets basically anyone within like a meter range. So you all have to kill him and it takes about a minute and he's the one who drops pretty good loot. He drops, let's see, trinkets, rings, he drops the new monk weapon, which I got on my first run. Um, it's actually better than the heart forger 
because it has extra wisdom and extra, I think, stamina. So yeah, it's better than Heart Forger of Healing and I think Salvation. But anyways, I th I'm pretty sure uh, Warrior Shield drops, which is better than Wall of Honor. So if you're a warrior, you probably want that. I don't think there's any other loot that's been found off of him. And then you have the Ranger go in, and he goes into Sneak, and he goes and pulls the Dragon Boss. So he's basically invisible, and he passes all those mobs, and the rest of the team just waits behind. And this is the point where um the warrior and the monk have to discuss how they're gonna how he's gonna heal the warrior. When the dragon comes, you have to uh stay out of this red circle because he does AOE spells only in the red circle, not to the whole team until later. So you have to find a way, a position that you can heal the warrior while he's tanking the dragon boss. And one way that we do this is when the dragon appears the tank pulls him forward towards that gate and then he steps backwards and faces the dragon towards us so that he's closer to the heels because it can get out of range so you have to have the uh, monk healing the warrior in range and the only way to do that is for the dragon to face the team so the ranger basically just avoids the mobs and then he gets to the dragon and at the dragon in that area it says you feel the ground heating up under you or whatever and you start to lose health so basically the ranger just has to either snipe or split shot or some arrow spell to the dragon when he's in range and then quits the team which essentially makes the dragon go towards the monk and the ranger and the warrior on your team so then you invite back the ranger and the dragon takes like a minute to get back there and then you basically just do the thing I talked about where you heal the tank when he's doing the regular AoE spells. And basically you're all, everyone on the team, even if you're in the circle or not, gets stunned for like three seconds. So, and the warrior is still getting attacked. So, you, the monk basically has to do the rapid healing really fast on the tank so that um he doesn't lose health too quickly. And that lasts for a while when he's at like the 50% health range. And then, later on in the battle, the dragon does another spell, which is Frost. And it affects all the players. You slowly lose health, but you don't lose that much. So, basically, the monk can just use Reign of Healing on them, and Rapid Healing on the tank again. At the end of it, it's basically just keep Rapid Healing the tank. And then the dragon pretty much dies after that, if you're successful. So, the tips on that are to stay out of the circle... Rapid heal the tank and rain of healing on the other teammates later on the th in the battle. Except there is one problem with monks healing. It's the rapid healing nerf, and they increased the uh, cast time for rapid healing to 1.5 seconds. And all of the monks are pissed off about that, because I mean it was a lot easier before. And now we can barely keep our tanks alive because it's such a long cast time so I mean you find a way to get around it you just have to click you just basically just have to spam the button until it casts it's something that makes us all mad um so basically the dragon drops epics uh, he may drop some better trinkets and probably rings most people go in the dungeon for is now the souls and if you don't know what souls are, it's a new currency in the game where you get a certain number of souls to uh, go to a vendor and you can get the uh, epic recipes for the shoulders and the chest armor. Uh, that's the only way to attain those two armors now. Also, there's another vendor which is in between Greenmont and the town closest to it. I'm not sure what it is. But basically there's a bunch of these flying humans. They have wings on them and stuff, but they're pretty low level. And there's a vendor there, and he offers other gear like epic trinkets, epic rings, and epic necklaces. So if you're level 60 and you have enough souls, you can purchase those too with the new souls. Usually they cost around the 100 soul range, which takes a while to get. There's also a quest giver there, and it's a level 60 quest. And it's actually a daily, so it changes every day. Basically, you have to 
you have to kill one of the bosses from the dungeons and it changes each day so one day it could be Alo Rajil uh, it could be the new dragon boss or it could be Cosmo uh, it may be some of the other bosses but so far those are the only three dailies it's had and once you kill him the quest complete and then you have to go back and you turn it in you get six souls so that's six souls in addition to what the dragon boss drops which is in the range of one to three souls we've seen so far so you could get up to nine souls for killing one of the bosses in the dungeons so yeah it's a nice bonus but I mean it's really not enough because we're talking about we're talking about items and recipes in the 100 soul range so you can imagine that can take days for just one recipe or one trinket or whatever so I mean I'm planning to get the uh epic shoulder, epic chest, epic trinket, and epic necklace, and that will take around 500 souls to achieve, and let's say I get like 10 souls a day, that would be 50 days that I have to do the dungeons in order to get those four items, and that's a realistic number, so many people are going to have to get that many, unless they don't really want the trinkets. Because there's two other ways to get trinkets, which is by the Shadow Prince, of course, and also the dungeon, which drops blue trinkets. But personally, I'm going to try to get a blue trinket from the dungeon, and also the uh, epic trinket for monks, because my main character is a monk. So the soul system is really nice, because the community actually asked for it. We said we wanted a way to get epics, instead of just having to get lucky and going in the dungeon and getting a 1% drop rate for an epic which is ridiculous and now we can go in the dungeon multiple times and get an add up souls which are like currency and you can actually get that epic but it's not it's not epic weapons yet which we had hoped for it's just epic items basically no no weapons and also on um, the uh, epic recipes for the other four items you have to try to go in the dungeon and get those epic recipes or go in the auction house because they only cost like 10 gold each now so it is kind of annoying that you have to run the dungeon multiple times to get one recipe which would normally cost 10 gold uh, so a lot of people are pretty mad about that but overall I like this whole system I just hope they drop the amount they have to get for at least the uh, shoulder and chest recipes because that's ridiculous that you could get the other ones for 10 gold and now these ones are so special I mean they're just basically the same thing I mean it's not like they have double the amount of stats that the other ones had they're exactly the same thing and you have to run the dungeon like a hundred times to get one of those and that's if you don't do the daily of course I really hope that game off changes that in the future but it's it's helping their profits you get the tablets and you can reset your exhaust and uh, it's helping their sales for that because people want to try to get as many souls as they can in the 100 minutes exhaust which is actually not 100 minutes it's like probably 75 I'm not sure they'd have people buying those for two dollars each day I mean people buy multiple um, tablets and they could get like 500 exhaust per day or more I mean and then they can just get a lot of souls but it's it's helping their sales but for the people who don't want to spend that much money each day it's aggravating we work just as hard they just spend more money to achieve what they want which isn't really fair but game off has already made it a pay-to-play game it made us pretty mad that we had to pay fifteen dollars for the best set in the game and now we have to buy these tablets to get the uh... souls which will cost even more money over time if you buy thirty tablets you're paying more than the ring gear so i mean it's become a play to play game if you want to be the best which really isn't fair at all and but the thing about the souls is you can't buy them uh, the only way to get souls is to run the dungeon, which is a lot better. But in order to get masses amount of them per day, you have to buy tablets. So all in all, I'm happy that they made that they implemented the soul system. 
but I'm not at all happy that you have to get that many to get a recipe that usually costs 10 gold. So, let's just talk about the dungeon overall. Overall, it's a challenging dungeon. After the first two days, uh, you start to realize that it becomes a lot easier. And we expected that, but some of us were really hoping that it would be a lot more challenging. Relic's Key was really, really hard the first three days or so. Uh, n barely anyone could beat it. I remember like one or two people posting on the forums that they beat it. And no one else was able to because we never have that kind of challenge before. And then Naswa's Prison, that was challenging for like an hour. <laughs> And then people started to realize that they could just get two mages, pull all the mobs, and then just kill the bosses. So it, ta it took a lot less exhaust and it wasn't challenging. And for this dungeon, it took a while to get used to it. But now we just have the mage clearing all those first mobs. And then we can just kill the boss, the four bosses, which aren't that hard actually. The only hard one would be the warrior because of his AoE. But... I mean, it's not that hard. Those four bosses are pretty easy. And the dragon is fairly hard. Only because sometimes the monk is out of range of healing. And because of the rapid healing nerf. But overall, the, the dungeon is medium. Uh, I'm sure pe people will get better at it. And it will go from medium to easy once again. And also because uh, once we get better gear, uh, the dungeon will become easier. All the dungeons will become easier, of course. Uh, but yeah, for now, it's just a medium dungeon. I was really hoping that it would be challenging, and the first day I thought it was. But now that you can just clear the first few mobs, kill the easy bosses, then pull the last dragon, which is not super hard... Uh, it's kind of a letdown, but I like the dungeon overall. It's kind of trippy. It's pretty good overall. I'm I'm pretty impressed that game loft. I just wish they'd make it harder. So now we're just going to talk about the game in general and what it needs. Right now, Order and Chaos needs PvP arenas, and most people realize this, and they've asked game loft multiple times. But Game Off has shown us over and over again that they make the executive decisions and that what we say doesn't matter to them. I mean, we we asked for dungeons, but we didn't expect that they'd only have one dungeon per update for the first three updates with no other endgame content. Uh, once you get the best gear, what is there to do? You get the best gear, and then you go run another dungeon, and you get more gear. I mean, what, what's the point in that? So, we want PvP arenas because we want to have something to do end game besides getting more gear, which is pointless if there's nothing to do with it. I know a lot of people use Vegas Square and the Swamp of Worms PvP arena as PvP zones, but really they're just made to make it more challenging and game off probably intended for us to fight there and have battles but they really just made it so it's more challenging not really so that um we can have actual end game content the pvp arenas that aren't open in greenmont are what we've been waiting for for a while and the fact that we can't even go in those yet is just sad uh We've asked Game Off multiple times if, if we can have the PvP arenas before a dungeon. Uh, after the first dungeon, people were like, okay, we saw what a dungeon's like, now I want PvP arenas. And then Game Off had this set plan to have two more dungeons that gave the rest of the gear. And now we're not even sure if PvP arenas will come next because Game Off seems to be making all the executive decisions. We don't have any say in it whatsoever. The only good thing is that Game Off introduced a soul system, which is one thing we asked for, but they haven't been able to introduce much of anything else we've asked for, which is unfortunate. Really, what Ga what Order and Chaos needs is a PvP arena in the next update, and if Game Off can't do that, I'm sure that even more people will leave. But if they do do it, I think if some people will read what the update's about, then they'll come back. We'll have a lot of old people, hopefully. And they'll be able to do the dun they'll have to do a dungeon to get good.
what I'm hoping for in the PvP arena is more than four people per team and actual like some obstacles in it uh, to actually bring a challenge to us instead of just a, an area where people fight just like Vegas Square maybe like a good design for it an open area obstacles like level 60 mobs and the Shadow Prince is actually like that now but it's not a dedicated PvP arena and it's, it's not Manhunt or any other settings for it uh, which is what PvP arena should be so yeah that's PvP arena is what we need next and I'm not just talking one PvP arena we need more than one if Game Off is gonna keep doing this whole thing where they introduce one new endgame thing each update that's not acceptable we need more than one PvP arena if this game is gonna come back because right now in its current state people are getting pretty mad and leaving so I'm really hoping that Game Loft adds more than one PvP arena. Also, one other thing it needs is an expansion. Now I say this because Game Loft promised they add it, they'd add it, but we know that PvP arenas is the main priority here. And by expansion, I mean add a new continent with level 70 as the level cap at least. And I'm hoping if they do this that they make it so that all the gear that we didn't that we just got isn't like null and void so that we have to we spent a lot of hours and a lot of money just so that we can get an area where we have to get all new level 70 gear again so i'm hoping that there's going to be like an upgrade system where you can upgrade your gear to level 70 by doing so and so so yeah that's one thing that it needs but that's after pvp arenas of course so pretty much that's going to be the ordering chaos segment for today we can talk more about this next week and we may talk more about how the aristars temple is doing i'm hoping for a guest star on ordering chaos to, to talk about ordering chaos next week so if you want a guest star just email me if you want to give me suggestions on what to talk about for ordering chaos in the coming weeks you can visit the Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash 2x4hardcore, or you can email me at 2x4hardcore at gmail.com. Just give a request for what you want me to talk about in Ordering Chaos, if not more of the Aristotle's Temple. But now we're going to get into Infinity Blade 2. This game, so far, is really stunning. In my opinion, it's about at the same level of fun as the first Infinity Blade and the graphics are basically the same except on the iPad 2. If you didn't know I have an iPod Touch 4G and an iPad 2 so I'm able to have two perspectives on this. One thing I don't like is with all games on the iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch which is where you can't save your progress from one of the devices to the other so when I was playing on my iPod Touch and I tried playing on my iPad, um, I wasn't at the same place that I was on my iPod. So that's one problem that doesn't save. But yeah, that's basically the only complaint I have about that. The game itself is stunning, as I said, graphically and also gameplay-wise. The story is slightly confusing. I don't really quite understand it basically what i've gotten is at the beginning you go in this asian temple place and you have to fight through pretty easy bosses then you fight this boss that's not that hard and then the god king appears and he's about to kill you and then your sidekick basically shoots an arrow through your head and then you wake and then you see like a cutscene of you waking up almost naked <laughs> and it's actually the first human face that we've seen cuz all usually all the bosses and even your character have masks on and so we saw what epic games is able to do with like an actual human without armor or anything and it's just normal it's not anything to brag about so you basically wake up and he says I will not become one of them or something like that. And then the cutscene ends and you wake up at this castle and it says 
worker, I will find you. And apparently the worker of secrets is somehow important in this game. I'm not really sure why. So basically you have to try to go through this castle and find the worker of secrets. There's many different paths to take, which is nice. Because in the last one there were only a few paths. In this one you have different ways to go. And basically you can choose which way to go. You still do die every time. And when you go through the castle, at the end of each path you take, you die a certain way. And the way they've done this is not by some guy just slaughtering you, which does happen on some of them. But also, there's this hole in the ground, and you stick your hand into it trying to accomplish something, and it kills you because you're mortal. And I think that was kind of lazy, like the lazy way out, but it's fine for now. And the other way that you can go is you take a certain path and it leads you to this elite boss. There's actually three or four different elite bosses. And you have to try to attempt at killing them, but usually they kill you and then you have to restart again. And if you played Infinity Blade 1, you know that you rebirth and then you have to walk through the whole thing again and then rebirth again. And each time something different most likely happens. And I don't really understand the story yet. I just don't really know what to say about it. It's not really explained very well. But anyways, uh, there's a few new things in it. Mostly the uh, weapons and different types of weapons you can have. There's dual wheel weapons, which is where you have two one-handed swords. And you have to fight the boss. And this mostly relies on parrying and dodging because there's no shield to block with. And then there's the... Uh, traditional shield and sword and there's also heavy weapons uh the one i like out of these three is dual weapons because it's just a lot easier and you can get a lot more combos and they're usually faster another thing they changed is when you when you use the super attack spell which is where you make the enemy pause and he's stunned basically uh, then you actually get the chance to stab him multiple times so you just have to tap different parts of the screen on his body and then you can get like multiple stabs which is nice there's a few other new things that I'll talk about next week as well so that's pretty much the episode for today uh, next week we're gonna be talking more about the Air Stars Temple or whatever you guys send in also more in depth into Infinity Blade probably Modern Combat 3, and maybe Minecraft. I'm not sure yet. There's not much to talk about it, though. So that episode will be up near the end of the week, um, and it'll be up on the Podbean site. And I'm also hoping to put this all three of these episodes that I make in the next week on iTunes. So if, if you know, it, there'll be a link on the Facebook page to the iTunes and the Podbean. That's, again, facebook.com slash 2x4hardcore. So that's pretty much it for today. I hope you guys try to comment on the Facebook page or email me, whatever you want. If you're interested in guest starring to talk about any of these games, you can do the same. Just contact me through any of these sources on the side. That's the episode for today. Bye. Why don't you turn it a